Managing the million-plus acres of the Black Hills National Forest has always required strategic compromises. Terry Jane is a Forest Service researcher. The Black Hills has had a long history of timber harvest, which has contributed to the resilience of this forest beginning in 1899. Jane's recent virtual presentation offered insight into how history has shaped the hills. That complicated history involves land held sacred to the Ocheti Shakoween people as the birthplace of their nation. When the U.S. government broke treaty promises, settlers and miners flooded into the region. It was a time when loggers were clear-cutting ponderosa pine trees to build settlements and secure mining tunnels. In 1899, the Homestake Mining Company and the federal government saw that the trees were vanishing. So they came up with a plan. They agreed Homestake would pay to cut timber on the newly established National Forest. The government would decide where loggers could cut and how much. Today, the Forest Service still uses that system to sell logging rights in National Forests across the country. Jane says that won't change. It should always been, be considered as a critical component in forest management. But she says the amount of current logging in the Black Hills is unsustainable. The forest is now at a crossroads, much like the one in 1899. This time, it's not just mining forcing the issue. Jane says it's nature recoiling from more than a century of human management. Over time, forests naturally thin themselves. Wildfires, tree-killing bugs, and other natural forces create space to let old trees grow bigger. In that natural system, grass and animals thrive. Jane says people have interrupted those forces. Throughout most of last century, we thought disturbances were bad, and we tried to stop disturbances either by suppressing wildfires or thinking we could manage our way out of disturbances by harvesting trees. Now, she says, that thinking has changed. The past hundred years have taught us that we need to consider and integrate disturbance into forest management rather than trying to control it. But for the Black Hills, the realization came too late. The forest grew dense with smaller trees. That made it easier for fires and deadly bugs to jump from one tree to the next. Since 2000, the Black Hills suffered the three biggest wildfires in its recorded history and its second biggest mountain pine beetle infestation. Millions of trees died. Meanwhile, Jane says logging continued at a pace that was determined years earlier. Which resulted in a double whammy. The forest couldn't keep up, and the result is a drastic decrease in the number of trees big enough to harvest as timber. Jane says climate change could make things worse. It could shorten winter and make wildfire season longer. It could also help bugs. Cold winter temperatures kill mountain pine beetle larvae. However, if the Black Hills gets warmer winter temperatures, this may extend beetle infestations. She says current logging levels in the Black Hills National Forest are twice what the forest can sustain long term. So the Forest Service is coming up with a new forest plan. That plan could influence harvest limits for the next 15 years. In the meantime, the Forest Service has already cut back on timber sales for the last two years. The timber industry is already feeling the effects. Nyman Enterprises plans to close its Hill City sawmill in May. That will eliminate 125 jobs. Company president Jim Nyman blames the Forest Service for letting the woods get too thick. We tried to tell them in the 70s, 80s, and 90s that you better get more capacity in here and reduce this inventory or you're going to have bugs and fires. And they wouldn't listen. Nyman says big reductions in timber sales could force him to close his other two Black Hill sawmills in Spearfish and Hewlett, Wyoming. He says the resulting domino effect could wipe out the entire Black Hills timber industry and its 1,400 jobs. Nyman says the result could be no loggers to help manage the forest. He says the forest could then grow dense again, leading to the same problems faced now. While Nyman argues for continued logging, two environmental groups want a moratorium on timber sales. One of those groups has sued the Forest Service over similar issues in the past. The Forest Service does not plan to make drastic changes in logging limits while it works on a new forest plan. Jackie Buchanan is a deputy regional forester. We don't want to, you know, do a sweeping change and then have to come back and change it. So we're, we're going to be very thoughtful 
um, recognizing all the factors and all the parties that are impacted and the concerns that folks have around that harvest level. There is one person already talking with many of the parties involved about potential solutions. South Dakota Congressman Dusty Johnson has met with conservationists, loggers, and the Forest Service. He thinks there are ways to save the timber industry without overcutting the forest. Everybody loves this forest. Everybody acknowledges that a healthy timber industry is a critically important part of keeping this forest healthy. We can talk about jobs, and that's important, but uh, we also want to make sure that we get this resource long term. I think there's an awareness and understanding that we need to be even more innovative and even more creative in the future uh, if we're going to make sure that the trajectory of this forest and these jobs continues to be strong. Johnson says the Forest Service needs help overcoming chronic staffing shortages that make timber sales difficult. He says parts of the forest considered too rugged should be re-examined to allow logging. And he says there may be new uses for smaller trees. For South Dakota Public Broadcasting, I'm Seth Tupper in Rapid City.